Welcome to the It's Time to Sell podcast with your host, Chris Burvey. Chris is dedicated to mentoring entrepreneurs and sales professionals through the fear of selling so they can confidently bring their product or service to market. Here's your host, Chris Burvey. Welcome to the It's Time to Sell uh, podcast, Moran. It's great to have you on. Thank you very much for having me, Chris. I'm excited. Yeah, this is awesome. You're another great guest to come to my show through Interview Connections. Uh, my good friend uh, Jessica Rhodes' company, and uh, she's referred a lot of great guests to my show. How, how long have you been doing the podcast? Um, um, I think that, that's my third month. Okay. Where I'm just like out there putting myself out there, trying to kind of like, I, I guess, build the personal brand a little bit. Of course. Figure out that's going to help me build some more deal flow for the deals that I'm looking for. So, yeah, whatever, whatever it takes, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, that, that in and of itself is a great, uh, a great angle to talk about because I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I deal a lot with the human-to-human sales angle uh, of business, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, but I also, uh, I guess, preach, if you want to call it that, because I really believe all entrepreneurs need to be out there growing their personal brands, and uh, that's great to see you're getting yourself out there. Why don't we start off by you telling the audience uh, about yourself, like, uh, you know, bring us back to uh, how you got started in this direction you're you're in right now mm-hmm. yeah so i'll keep it short i've been involved in different businesses over the last um 11 years now i started businesses from scratch and then i pretty much realized that i don't like to be the day-to-day manager of businesses i i'm not really good at it as well and i just figured out and, and it's funny how i even figured out and, and got to this world i, I watch tv shows like shark tank and uh, the profit if you're familiar with yes did you hear about those, those oh absolutely those? Probably, yep. yeah and, and yeah, the dragons then for the Canadian or, or UK version. So I watched those TV shows and I remember managing a business, just running a business, my own business day to day and thinking, hey, I, I don't want to do that. I made a lot of money, but I realized I don't care how much money I'm making from that business. I just don't enjoy my day to day. And I remember looking at um, TV shows like Shark Tank and Profit and just thinking, hey, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to be the shareholder, the main shareholder, the owner. I want to share my advice and knowledge. But I don't want to deal with the day-to-day repeatable minimum, uh, minimal tasks. I want to take, I want to call the big shots, if that mm. makes sense. I want to take care of the overall strategy of the business versus the day-to-day. And that's what led me to uh, what I'm doing right now. Obviously, I've, uh, I've been through a lot and I, I, I met a lot of great, great mentors. Uh, but now my day-to-day is I'm out there looking to buy businesses um, as an investor. We're looking at deals all over the world, anywhere from the UK, US, Canada, Australia. Those are my, our main ones. Um, but I mean, I'm happy to look at deals literally anywhere. I, I, I looked at deals and, and negotiated with companies in, in Spain, Poland, Mexico, South Africa. So, and obviously Israel, which is where I'm from. So uh, any any deal is a good deal. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, so so you you decided to I guess get out of the actual day to day business operations because it was uh, kind of uh, task oriented and and having to deal with uh, I guess the ups and downs of the, of the day to day business and getting more into the high level stuff and uh, and investing in you know in in multiple businesses. So so are you uh, I, I guess a shareholder in multiple businesses right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. And by the way, you're the first uh, guest I think that I've had. I think I may have had one other guest on my podcast from Israel. So this is exciting to talk to someone. The technology <laughs> yeah, is amazing. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm Israeli. Or, I'm, like, I'm from Israel, born and raised. But in the last seven years, I, I didn't really have a home for more than four months. So I've been all over the place. It's now actually the first time that I'm staying for more than five months in, in one place, which is Israel. I just, I'm, I'm just a bit tired of traveling. So it's the first time I actually have a home yeah, exactly. for a while, so that's, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. So, so before we hit record, I, I expressed to you that a lot of the people who are listening to this podcast, are, uh, many of them are solopreneurs, uh, consultants, um, I guess the, uh, the broad umbrella of entrepreneur, but I, I find the, I do attract uh, people that are very much in startup mode and, and they know they're an entrepreneur and they, they want to try something, you know. So what are the options from your perspective as a, as a new entrepreneur? What, you know, what should, what should a new entrepreneur choose to do if they want to become a business owner? Yeah, and I could just, I guess, share my advice and, and my experience. Yeah. I've been in that place actually where I kind of like one of my businesses I 
which is the business I just mentioned. I, I just didn't work on that business anymore. I decided to close it for whatever reasons. And I had a period where I'm like, okay, what I'm doing with my life right now? And what I did was kind of a consulting, but I took equity for my my value and services. And uh, I think that's a big, big lesson that, that I learned. And it took me some time, but one of my mentors um, is always saying that you only build wealth by having equity in multiple transactions. Mm. Most people out there, they're focusing on just one business. That's their whole life. And if that's business going down, they have nothing. Um, I have another mentor who's actually um, one of the um, accountability tasks that I had uh, with him is basically calculate your personal balance sheet, but don't include your business as part of that of those assets that you own because like i said business can go up and down and the best time to sell a business is now no matter what you're telling yourself that's probably the best thing to do um that's i learned those things in, in, in the hard way just from business businesses going down and um what i realized is that if i really want to build wealth i need to have equity in multiple businesses and that's what i tried to do back then as, as kind of like a, a consultant that just went out there, offered value, and got equity in return for your services versus just a flat fee. Yeah. What, what do you say? I think that's phenomenal advice. Uh, what do you say about the person who, um, you know, their, their passion is their business? And, uh, you know, uh, like if I look at me right now with the growing of my personal brand, I'm, I'm really passionate about helping entrepreneurs uh, become successful in the area of sales, human to human selling and personal branding. So when I look at my business, you know, what, what that has done is it's I've, I've written books. Books now on the subject. I've, I speak. You know, how, how do you become less emotionally attached to the actual business, such that you're, you know, you're, you, you're, you're spreading yourself out amongst multiple businesses? Any, any ideas on yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, great, great question. So, and obviously, your personal brand, you can. It's not really a business you can sell, right? It's right. Just, all the businesses depend on you. Yeah. But what I suggest to do, and again, all those things I learned from people who are some of them literally billionaires right now and what I learned from them is that even if they have one or had one main business yeah. they always took money and invested it somewhere else just because again you never know when your business is going to go up or down yes and I don't care what market you're in or what sector you're in um, the, the economy I mean things will go down eventually if you're going to stay in the business for uh, 10 20 years something will happen that is not in your control yes. and you want all the time to at least take some money away from the business because most most people most especially solopreneurs they're making some money and they're investing everything back into the business so what i suggest is just take part of it and invest it somewhere else either in a new business or in a, maybe real estate or whatever works for yeah. you yeah yeah phenomenal advice phenomenal advice so how about you know i know i understand that you've done some work with apps and different things like that so so uh, you know yeah. tell us about that yeah, so um, one of the companies that I bought, I bought uh, an app company that wasn't successful and it became really successful. <laughs> it got to a point where it's in the top 100 apps overall in the App Store. Wow, um, congratulations. Yeah, it was, <laughs> thank you. It's, it's not anymore, it's not there yeah. anymore, but it used to make it used to make a lot of money and it was a great little business that I learned a lot from. I think my the, the biggest lesson that I learned, which I already said, is no matter what you think your business is, Here's the thing. If you think that your business is going to make money forever or let's say you have a contract with a specific client that is supposedly going to stay for two, three more years, that's the exact reason you need to sell that business because that's something you can sell to a potential buyer and tell him, hey, here's the potential for your business. Here's the certainty for income. Because like I said, you can never know what happens. One of my mentors, he had a AIG as a client and he had contracts with them for like three years in advance, but then AIG got bad. Get, get bankrupt right yeah. and that they were one of the biggest companies out there yeah um so and that's what happened to my app the reason i'm saying that that's what happened to my app one day apple just came and, and basically told me hey sorry you can't upload that app anymore because we came with our own version and basically everything all the revenues from a lot of money to it's all got down to zero literally in one day and i i learned the hard way i learned the hard way that um if you can get yourself into a point where you're making, where you're having capital events, uh, do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. How how do you approach 
finding these deals to of companies to buy? Uh, you know, have, have, do you have uh, multiple people looking out for you? Do you just put yourself out there as a as a as a business person who is an investor? H- uh, how do you do that? Yeah, so all of those things. In, in the end of the day, it's like it's like when you when you start a business, you need to start with uh, marketing or advertising campaigns, right? You build yourself your own funnel of um, people who come in as, as prospects, and some of them will become clients. Same goes here. You go out there, you put yourself as much as possible, and you're just creating marketing campaigns, basically, as someone is looking to buy businesses, yeah. anywhere from social to offline to um, a- a- any option out there right now to just put yourself out there if it's going to events and, and obviously have other people who's doing those things for you. So all, all of the above is just a matter of putting yourself out there as much as possible, and you will get tons of deal flow. Some of them you could close, and some of them not. The same ways as, as when you try to get a, a new client, the only difference is, is that um, here one deal is, 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 at least personally, I think that getting one deal is, is much better than just getting one client, and that's why I, I try to focus on this at least. Yeah, that's awesome. Wow, it's a, it's a, it's certainly a, it seems like it's a mindset. Uh, you're... Uh, you're expressing yourself as, a, and I'm I'm listening to you, and what I'm know what I'm hearing from you is that you have a mindset towards business that that is at the investor level versus the day to day level is what I'm feeling, and and uh, I, I think that's a wonderful mindset. You know, it's it's uh, it's I, I, how do you think you found you came upon that? Was it through the mentorship? Um, all of those things, yeah. Just just realizing that. That's that's what I want to do. Um, yeah, I mean, you see, look look at all the richest people out there right now. Like, just just take some of the people on Shark Tank, like Mark Cuban, for example. He's not running his day to day businesses. He got other people who obviously are his partners. He's helping him. He's helping them with his advice, his resources, um, sometimes his money, and he's taking a great upside from those businesses. Is going to be successful. So. And I agree with you. Mindset, I think it's it's, it's crucial for success in anything. I yeah. think I think who Tony Robbins said it, that that eighty percent of success is mindset, and only twenty percent is the actual uh, strategies. And yes. I agree with that one hundred percent. I think I think our mental um, mental toughness and mindset and habits and all those things are are more important than than anything. Absolutely, yeah. I, I'm, the name of my book is uh, "It's Time to Sell: uh, Cultivating the Sales Mindset," and uh, I, I, I use the analogy in my book of the iceberg, uh, whereby ninety percent of the iceberg is under the water, and that's that's really the mindset, you know. Um, I love it. Yeah, yeah. And and so, how have you approached sales? Uh, has sales been? And when I think of your story of sales, I, I guess what I'm feeling is that you're. You're, you must be a masterful negotiator. Is that is that a focus of yours? One hundred percent. But I think something that I learned over the years is that the best way to to get a deal going or to close a sale or however you want to call it is just by literally figuring out the other side. Just making sure you understand what their what their needs are, what they need, what their problems are. Absolutely. And to find a way to to basically to 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 give them good answers on, on those problems on those challenges then you find a way to make it a win-win and i think the only way to do to get a deal going is to, to have a win-win scenario i think that's that's at least my main focus when i talk to to anyone in the world you know i try to add as much value as i can and if it makes sense to the other side then then also let's do it exactly yeah that's uh that's wonderful advice yeah nothing no no you know no one ever wins in a win lose or a lose win scenario and uh yeah that's how you tarnish your reputation uh you know uh over time right and they and it's like the great boomerang of life it'll come back to haunt you at some point in time right or hit you in the back of the neck yeah. <laughs> right yeah. yeah exactly if 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 not for that do you do it just for the karma for the yeah. Good karma out there <laughs> yeah you got it you got it yep. so so what types of businesses do you uh, currently own um you know like uh, uh, and what's your portfolio look like? Uh, is it is it a diversity of, of businesses? It is like we're, we're looking to buy literally any type of business. Uh, I don't care. Like my my expertise and background is mostly um, e-commerce marketing. Now we're dealing with even distribution and manufacturing. And I mean, I'm I'm talking to businesses in the right now negotiating with businesses in the engineering and. Um, um, even in Canada, I just talked yesterday with a business that uh, drilling for, I don't even know what they're looking for. I don't, I don't think for oil and gas, but for something like that, that I, I didn't even understood 100%. <laughs> so uh, in the end of the day, for me, at least uh, right now, it comes down to, first of all, 
understanding the numbers and making sure the numbers make sense. And if they make if they make sense, then um, it's all about basically for me. In the end of the day, I think business. It's a very simple but not easy thing. I think in the end of the day, though, business coming comes down to making sure more money is coming in than money going out. And I try to focus on that at least. I obviously need experts in the industries that I want to get in, but it's not something that I personally at least want to focus on too much. Yeah, exactly. So, so tell us about the concept of OPM. Uh, uh, I, 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 this is something I caught in your bio. Um, you know, how do you buy a multi-million dollar business using OPM? Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, uh, g- great question. So, uh, in the end of the day, again, I want, I want to give another example. Nowadays, if you look at the biggest, biggest companies in the world, um, take, I don't know, Facebook, for example, the best way for them to grow is by acquisitions, by buying other companies. That's that's the only fastest way for them to do it, to meet their shareholders' demands, because it's really hard to do it only organically. And organically, I mean just internally with sales and marketing and, and introducing more products. So, for example, that's what they're buying. That's why they're buying WhatsApp and Instagram and all those. Um, and what I'm trying to say is the way that they are buying companies is many times using other people money which is in their case the public money mm. so same goes with the private small smaller world uh, you can go out there and buy companies by the, the way i basically do this is we leverage the business assets to finance the acquisition costs that's the simplest way to put